First of all, let me tell you, what a delightful movie. Oh, thank you. You know, I just think there aren't enough movies that are pure escapism, and that is just wonderfully entertaining well, escapism. Uh, oh, well, I'm thrilled that, that, you, that you like it. You I know, like it a lot. It means a lot. It's always kind of scary. You work on a movie, you work real hard on it, and you uh, always kind of have your fingers crossed because you never really know, and you start putting it out there for audiences and getting feedback, and, you know, it's... Uh, it's a thrill. It, it's, I mean, it's just, it's, it's, uh, it kind of um, means everything to have people like the picture. I'm wondering if, uh, of course, uh, it's a movie about the cultural clash between mm -hmm. Americans and Japanese in the auto industry. That's the platform. Do the Japanese have a sense of humor about themselves, or did you have to be very careful how you handled them? Well, I think in the beginning I was probably a little overly careful. Uh, and uh, Getty Watanabe, who plays Kazuhiro, came up to me at one point and said, you know, I think it's wonderful that you're being very respectful. Um, and I, I know you're considering taking out a couple of these lines of dialogue because you feel like they might be in bad taste. Well, that one I think probably is in bad taste. And I think it's good that that's gone. But this one here is really funny. And I think everyone will find it funny. And I don't think you should be frightened of it. So I, you go about making your movie and let us help police these things for you. And that became our working relationship. And Getty. Uh, had a terrific influence on the picture, and uh, um, and I feel when I see it very good about the balance between the two. But it was something, yeah, we were v all very very careful about. And Michael Keaton, it was crucial to him. Michael plays a guy who, you know, he makes some mistakes. He he isn't right in his perception of the Japanese for you know a good portion of the picture, and he knew that that was a part of his character. But he also wanted to make sure that he walked the line and that that ultimately that the respect was there because all people deserve respect. Hey all you cyberpunks and retro nerds, you guys sick of me yet? I didn't think so. In today's episode of Neon Trash, I thought we would check out a 1980s comedy film called Gung Ho. This is directed by Ron Howard and stars Michael Keaton. I saw it on basic cable many years ago and found myself enjoying it, but I hadn't seen it in many years. Surprisingly, finding this son of a bitch on DVD, at least at local video stores, is rather hard to come by. This one cost me about 18 bucks used. And I can't wait to check it out. I love Michael Keaton. I love Ron Howard. He's a good director. So without further ado, motherfucks, check out that trailer. Peep that shit. And we get back. Y'all motherfuckers are going to know my opinion on Gung Ho. If I screw this up, this town is dead meat. Take a town down on its luck. They're coming next week. Who? A Japanese company coming to save the day. We must build spirits. With Michael Keaton in the middle. I'm the answer, man. I thought it handled great. Put it all in the hands of Ron Howard, the director of Splash and Cocoon. And what do you get? Oh. Gung Ho. This Strictly coming from a pop culture perspective, I feel like this movie is a lot of fun. The music is really good. Uh, looking at all the new wave and 1980s fashion senses is a lot of fun. And the way the movie is filmed, um, I can't help it. I like it. It's with actual, real film. This isn't, you know, recorded on a hard drive. So the basic premise of the movie Gung Ho is about Michael Keaton, his character, uh, he works in a small town car factory that gets shut down. They're shut down for roughly about a year. A lot of the townsfolk are suffering hardships. He decides to go to Japan and pitch the perspective of reopening this factory to a bunch of Japanese businessmen. Uh, they take his you know, offer, they come to the States, and they reopen the factory. Well, this definitely runs in strict contrast to these you know, good old boy Americana perspective, and that's where a lot of this comedy comes from. At its core, the movie Gung Ho has a really good heart beneath its surface. I feel like director Ron Howard wanted to show these differences between Japanese, you know, businessmen and American workers and revel in the differences. It's not about poking fun at the Japanese. 
for the Americans. It's about just showing the differences and laughing at the absurdity of it all because at some point towards the end of the film, Michael Keaton's character has to confront all of these um, you know, American workers and tell them that he lied, that of course, you know, the American workers have their own faults too. It doesn't really lean towards one perspective or the other. It shows that teamwork and loving your fellow man and trying to do an actual good job can get you far in life. And in my opinion, that's definitely a liberal perspective, especially considering this was made during the mid-1980s. A lot of younger audiences that come into this film, they're put off by it. You know, if you work hard enough and you respect people enough, great things can come from it. But maybe, just maybe guys, I'm taking too deep of a dive for a 1980s comedy starring Michael Keaton and directed by Ron Howard. So, with that being said, motherfuckers, we're gonna get right to the star count because I really don't want to take a deep dive with this film. Gung Ho, out of 10 stars, gets a solid, I'm gonna say six and a half, almost seven out of 10.